The Finnish police have one eight-hour course per year per police of what to do in those situations. And it's mostly drinking coffee and talking shit. I have actually a couple of things I want to talk about today. As you may have realized already. Uh, the first one is... The looming defund the police situation in Finland. Our government has decided to cut police funding quite drastically and I think that's one of the stuff one of the dumbest things you can do why well we can we can actually see why we can actually see why uh, let's take the sh uh, Navy SEAL explains how to reform police yes let's what scares me the most is I don't see a way if we don't talk to each other. That that's where there's no solution. Because you know, look for every ten viral video that you see of a of a cop hitting somebody with a baton or a rioter throwing something through a window. For every ten of those viral videos, there's another viral video that has, you know, the guy with the free hugs T-shirt on. That's out talking mm -hmm. to the cops and saying, hey. You know, I, I get it. And they're communicating with each other and talking. And when you communicate with people, it's, it's just like a hostage rescue basic technique. You want to humanize. You want to humanize instead of dehumanize. And right now... Uh, this guy is Choco Willink. He's a former Navy SEAL who trains police officers all around the world and special, uh, special forces military personnel and... He's a really cool dude and also a master. Well, he's not a master in jujitsu, but he's like some sort of a black belt or something. And basically what he's saying is instead of defunding the police and taking away the money that they could spend well, you should actually train the police more. So when the shit hits the fan, the normal, like, in-line police officer knows what to do and doesn't freak out and doesn't, like, overreact. So the police officers can keep their calm and act as they should, uh, which is de-escalating the situation. Not escalating the situation, de-escalating the situation. And the only way you can reach that level is by doing drills and practices and courses and everything. So 20% of the time of a normal police officer, it should be training. One fifth of the time, every police should be training for these situations. Because what if you, you pull over a person and he has a knife or he's fucking taking some hallucinating uh, drugs and decides you're a fucking drug and he needs to slave. You need to know how to act and not to overreact. You need to survive that situation and also save a life at the same time. And that's what our government, who is mostly left in here in Finland, doesn't understand. They just see the police as a bad person for spraying like protesters and shit. But they don't see that the, the reason why they acted that way was because of the chain of command was broken and they weren't trained for that situation. They didn't know how to act. And why is that? The Finnish police have one eight-hour course per year, per police, of what to do in those situations. And it's mostly drinking coffee and talking shit. So let's say four hours a year. That's not one-fifth of the time. You should basically have two hours per day training what to do. In those situations of course that's not like possible so you you would have like longer uh like camps or something that you can like cramp up all of the training so when you go back to the field you know what to do it it, it, it comes from your spine it comes from instinct you know what to do uh and i'm i'm sad that they are thinking of defunding the police in finland or not defunding but taking a lot, large chunk of the funding away because the Finnish police actually need more funding so they can 
train our police officers better and avoid overreactions. Yeah, it's the uh, yeah. I, I I like I like a government. I like the government. I like our government. But this is like one of the dumbest things I've heard in a while. You 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 said it right. They can't act the correct way if they're never trained for it. It's not the officer's fault. It's the government's fault. That's completely true. Of course, there are like really bad police officers in, inside the. Uh, inside the many 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 police officers there's like there are bound to be bad apples in there but you can avoid those bad apples with strict training take your police officers and take them through the same training as you take like uh, the Finnish special forces who are working with the United Nations to secure peace in Middle East or something. Take the police and make... Because I have seen those drills. They are fucking brutal. Like hostage situations and... Uh, roadway... Uh, blockages and everything like... The, the situation where... Two person... We, we saw this live when I was... I was at the army. Two person were... Uh, on the side of the road... Uh, waving to, waving to, for the special forces car to stop because they had a flat tire. They asked for aid, and when they were uh, giving the aid, one of the guys who were on the side of the road decides to pull a gun on them. And you need to know what, how to react, and how to de-escalate the situation. And it was fucking tense. <laughs> it, it was like because they they've been training for that their whole like whole career as a military personnel because they were shipping to Libya and that's like something that can happen every day there so it was in a fraction of a second everybody ha had drew their guns and the person who who speaked the language was translating that come the fuck down or we're going to shoot and they not a sh not a single single uh, shot was fired because the guy who was uh, looking for the manual in the club box was going around the car and got the guy with the gun, the original. So you need some fucking uh, iron, like iron nerves to do things like that. And I don't think many people understand that. Like it, it's a hard job to patrol the city because. When you go and ask if somebody needs help, when you go and see if somebody's all right, you don't know if they have a knife or if they're if they have ill intent or if they're just like a decoy so that you will be there so they can do bad things otherwise. You can't know those things. And shit shit happens even in Finland. We have we have a relatively peace and quiet of a nation. But shit happens here also. I'm professional, poorly trained police officers is just a ticking time bomb until a poorly trained officer does something that pisses off a lot of people. An example would be what happened in the US last year. Yeah, that's true. And that's actually the catalyst for this uh, conversation. Humanizing each other completely. And that's what scares me more than anything else, is if we can't talk to each other. Because, look, you take the most hardened uh, soldier in war. Some, you know, some badass soldier that's done four deployments, six deployments, whatever, and you put him into a room with a, a kid and a mom, an Iraqi kid and a mom or an Af Afghan kid and a mom, and you put him in that room and say, hey, s sit here for 15 minutes and find out what they're about. Here's an interpreter. That, that guy's going to come out of there going, yeah, I, g I get where they're coming from. It's, and same thing, vice versa. You take a hardened jihadist and you say, hey, talk to this guy over here about what he's trying to do inside your country. Well, just, just, just talk to him. When you open up the communications, and are you going to get some extremists on both ends? Yes, you will. So maybe I shouldn't have said the most hardened uh, soldier and the most hardened, because that you know what the most hardened soldier becomes a killer, becomes a killer. That that happens, it happens all the time. That's true. You know, I, I, well, I shouldn't say it happens all the time. It happens from time to time. That's how you get the Milai massacre. It happens. The the most hardened jihadists, they're not going to change their mind. They're not going to come to any any rose-colored view of that. That's the reason why you need to circulate the police like that. 
not one person is doing the same job for too long because you get numb you stop thinking of your uh clients as people and just another another client and when it when that happens you start dehumanizing them and after that it's like like you said a time bomb just waiting to go off of america but barring those total extremes you've got people you got hu other human beings and if you can get them to talk to each other they can find consensus they can find common ground but if they're not talking to each other then we don't move it make any progress and what to your whole kind of point about what's happening right now there's less and less communication between people open communication because if you if you talk to a uh, someone and they say the cops did this this and this and you say oh okay I explain to me what happened tell me what went down and then you say hey let me tell you what it's like for be for, for a cop being a cop when he sees that when he uh yeah it's it's not an easy task to be an officer yeah especially in like modern world when everybody hates you the far right hates you the far left hates you the modern modern left hates you the modern right basically loves you but at the end of the day they hate you if you don't like beat the leftist all the time so everybody hates you except for the people who actually think about what you're doing uh, I could have been a police officer. Yeah, I could have also been. I, I could still be a good police officer because I have been in really uh, stressful situations like uh, accidents and such, like big, huge motorway car accidents. And I have kept my cool. I have like been almost the only person who has like appointed people to do this, this, this while they're panicking. And I, the first time I did that, I was under 10. Well, I was actually performing an act I was told to do. I mean, my job was to go around the cars and ask if they're okay or if they're like bleeding a lot. And I was eight or nine or something. And I did that without a hesi any hesitation. I did that because I knew that people's life were in danger. And that's the only thing a young child like me could do to help. When I was 10, I was playing with grass and flying bikes in the bushes. Two very different people. <laughs> yeah. Thick violence cases happen and the person shows up and they're, they're getting assaulted by both parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Maybe that's what you, this cop was thinking when he showed up and saw your mom in this situation and did this to your dad. Right, Th like this is real conversations, but we don't we don't have them. And not only we don't have them, it <laughs> seems like thanks. It seems like there's forces that are actively trying to prevent us from talking each to each other, from sitting down at a table and saying, "Hey, man, what? Tell me what's going on." What for? Who wants Who wants the country to be divided? It's the people that you're talking about earlier. That that how do they score points? How do I score points with this group? How do I sp score points with the other group? It's by making making everything as divisive as possible. This is it's, what it's it's horrible. This is what we're talking about here. This is what we're talking about. Uh, the people who run things want the country to be divided, so they are re-elected. And how do they keep their own voters happy? is by defunding the police but they are also going to turn the other side of the spectrum to gain more voters by doing that and if the other side is going to be there they're going to make their very best effort to screw over the other side i fucking hate the uh, current way of democracy like party systems Th this is also because of like uh, especially in the United States where there's two parties but it, even in Finland we have multiple parties and this is a great example of I, I, I despise politicians like that like who are willing to screw over a lot of people just to make their voters happy even screw over the safety of the nation 
to make their voters happy. And that's that's what the left is doing right now. Again, I'm not right wing. I'm not left wing. I'm a little bit of both. I'm a little bit of country. Uh, that's that's a South Park episode. Sorry, but yeah. Uh, wow, this is gonna be a long video. Sorry about sorry about that. <laughs> this is gonna be a YouTube video. I'm just walking, uh, watching the timer on the top top right corner. It's fucking thirty minutes already. Old hag was the term I could, I, I used. Suckling the warm teeth of China. Yeah, Pi Biden. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes. These are all good points, but at the end of the day, like Choco, Choco th said the right things. Choco, Choco said the right things that you need to talk, train the police, and make sure that they are ready to act when it's need to be and not act when it's not ne uh, needed that way you will get the perfect society of safety and also uh, the freedom of walking down the street without the fear of like some fucking redneck in a blue suit deciding that you're the wrong color and he doesn't like you oh my fucking god you have you have a rolled up cigarette that looks like a joint. I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. That's not the goal. <laughs>